Right, so hey guys, and welcome back to another video. Um, since I haven't request, uh, received any requests on the YouTube community page or the Discord channel, I've decided to progress on to creating um, a web series now. So instead of carrying on with Python, we're now moving on to learning web languages which will help us create websites and stuff. So to begin with, today we're going to be learning how to create a simple login and register program, I mean a website which will allow you to register and log in using PHP, HTML and a bit of CSS. <clears throat> so to begin with, what you want to do is go ahead um, to your browser and type in XAMPP. This is a web hosting service that we're going to be using off on our local host so that we have access to SQL, which is our database system that we're going to be using. So once you're on it, you want to click download, um, find the correct version for your system, download it and install it. Once you're done installing it, um, I would also suggest getting Sublime Text because it's one of my favorite text editors. So if you do Sublime Text download, go to Sublime Text and download whichever versions <coughs> the best for you. So once you've got Sublime Text and Zamp all installed and ready, what you want to do during the installation process is remember which directory you're installing it to. So now that you know which directory you've installed Zamp to, um, you might as well pin it to your um, taskbars and now we can go to our directory that we installed XAMPP so I've installed it in my Z drive and then once you're inside XAMPP you want to look for a folder called htdocs and then once you're inside htdocs here's where you're going to put all your files to the websites that we create so I'm going to create a new folder I'm going to call this folder um, let's say login and register right so inside the folder all the files are going to be located where on you using which your website's going to run basically so what you want to do next is open sublime text um, create a new untitled file and then click on save as and then go back to your htdocs navigate there and then find your folder login and register is mine I'm going to call this index.php right so now if we hit save we'll have a blank file so what we want to do first is type in uh, HTML and then if you hit enter it's going to auto complete for you basically what is done right now is created a structure of the of the HTML code that we're going to be using throughout so the first bit just tells the browser what type of code is being used which is HTML the second bit is the head section where different codes um, such as the name of the website, the title of the website, um, it's hard to explain right now because I can't give you any context but keep in mind that the basic information of the website goes there, um, certainly not the one that is the main content being displayed. Any main content such as the headers or paragraphs or pictures, videos being displayed to the website are in the body section and that's that's just the end tag for the html so as any tag starts it needs to end as well so just as head has started up here it's it's been ended right here with like a forward slash so to start with we're going to give a website a title we're going to call it um we should call it for now let's just call it register login system right so now we now that we've got a title we can actually view the website as we go so if I if you want to open XAMPP and then you want to click on start for the Apache and start for the MySQL once they're both started it should be green now you can minimize that and go to Chrome and then what you want to do is type in localhost and when you hit enter if it takes you to dashboard that means you've installed it correctly everything's working fine and from change and then you take off um, dashboard and you can type in for me it's going to be register and login because that was the name of the folder which I created uh, was it register it's login and register sorry so whatever you call your folder inside the htdocs you need to type that word in right now the page is showing up as blank obviously because um, the index.php file is blank the index file is going to be the only file that's always displayed straight away. That's why we call it index. And as we see right here, the head tag has worked. So we've given the website a title. That's worked. 
so far. Now if you want to minimize this and come down to the body section, what we're gonna do be what we're gonna be doing first is giving the website a header. So we do h1 and we're gonna be calling it give it whatever name you like. I'm just gonna call it wages calculator for now. So let's assume that we have a system that calculates different wages for the different employees that we have. Let's just assume that for now. So further on, what we're going to do next is we're going to take the... So basically what this line does is basically just displays wage calculator right here. Um, next what we're going to do is start a form. So a form is going to be the element that basically gathers all the information from the user. So we're going to start the form tag. Uh, if you want you can hit enter as well and then it's going to end it for you so inside the form we're going to say um, method equals post because that's the type of method we're going to be using to post the information to the other HT, to the PHP script okay so once you've done that you want to do different inputs so input if you hit enter it's going to auto complete it for you as well and then the type of input we're firstly doing is text so that's going to be for the username and then the name you can just save it as username and then add an extra um, entity inside call it placeholder equals um, please enter your username so what this would do if we refresh the page now is create a text field for us and then it would say please enter your username the the placeholder basically just gives it a text behind and then obviously the text is cleared when you enter your own text obviously right now the website is looking pretty bad because of the style but we're going to fix that later so now that we've got a username field we're just going to shorten this down to just say username for now because it's too long for the field and then we can create another one of those inputs for the password so input type equals obviously password it's pretty straightforward the name is going to be password um, I'm going to explain what the name does in a second just bear with me for a moment so do that and now that we've got a username and password if you refresh the page we'll have two fields so you have username and also the password so once you've got that ready if you want the password to be on the next line all you need to do is open a new tag and do b um, forward slash br basically what that does is says break so it's going to go to the next line all right so now that we've got our two fields ready what we want to do next is go ahead and create a button that would submit this information so input type equals um submit uh and the name would be login start right so once we've got that you want to just close or actually you can give it a value which is going to be the text that is given on the button and then you can say login close this for now and then if you go back you should be able to see a button now we do have a login as well right now or if we enter any information and we click login it's just gonna like clear it all up because we haven't assigned anything to it so now that we're done with the HTML bit, we've created our form and everything, we're going to move on to the PHP scripting. So to start a PHP script, just within the body tags, you can open a new tag, question mark, PHP. And then we go down, question mark, close that. That's all you need. And anything between this will be PHP code. So what you want to do first is type in an isset statement. So we do if isset um is dollar post i'm gonna explain what i'm doing in a second and then if the post if the value being posted is um login start then what we do is going to be inside here so what i've just gone ahead and done is created a new if statement and what iset does um oops what ISET does is basically it's listening for different um, instances which are going on within the website. So I said if an instance happens that something is being posted using the method post obviously and the value or the name is login start which is the name of the submit button 
Then we're going to write the code below. So every time the submit button is pressed, this statement will get triggered. So if you want to display anything to the screen using PHP, you have to write echo. And then we're going to say session, or we can just say someone pressed the button. Every statement in PHP ends with a colon. So we have to do that. And then now if we go and refresh our page. Every time we press this button, it's going to say someone press the button. And then we also include an else statement. So we say else. We can type in echo button not pressed yet. Okay. So if we refresh, we're just going to do this. And then it says right now button not pressed because we've just loaded the page and now if we click the button it says someone has pressed the button again we're gonna um, load the page again it says button not pressed login and then that says someone has pressed the button so that's the basic concept of how ESET works so why do we really need this it's because every time the buttons press we're gonna gather the information that's stored in the username and password and then verify it with our database um, so what we're gonna do now is create a new variable so we do username equals dollar sign post and then the name of the username so the name that we gave to the username text holder was username so we're going to enter username in here that was the point of the name and then we also need to collect the password so we do password equals dollar post because we're using post method obviously if we use get method then we would be using get instead so I'm going to do get password and then we need to end these with a colon as well and that now I'm just going to show you what, what it's going to do if we do echo which is like printing in python username um, dot and then we do just end this one echo password then basically if we save this and refresh the page we do a new username and then we do a new password Hello world, login, and as you see right here, it just reveals whatever I've typed in. So the code's working so far. So it says what username I typed in and what password I typed in. So now that we've done this, um, we can go ahead and verify the information. For today's tutorial, I'm not really going to link this to a database. Next tutorial, I'm going to show you how to link it with a database such that you can register and log in. But for now, we're just going to have fixed username and a fixed password. So we'll say if dollar username eek. So sorry, I forgot. We need brackets in here. If username equals um, admin, let's say typical, obviously, and you can say and. I think you have to put a bracket as well. So, bear with me a second. So, we could do if username equals admin and the password equals. Um, one two three then what we want to do is we need an extra bracket in here just to hold this all together then what we want to do is echo login success welcome admin else what we're going to do is just you know echo username or password is incorrect All right we're just gonna load this I think there might be some errors so we're gonna start by typing in admin one two three and there we go login success welcome admin now if we log in again obviously it's incorrect because we haven't input anything or if I put John Godino in here or any gibberish of a password login username or password is incorrect now let me try using admin one two three 
and as we see right here it says login successful welcome admin so what you could also do to make this more interesting for today's tutorial is create a new page I mean a new file and then save that as session.php and then save it in the same directory so create a new HTML again and then what I call this whatever you want I'm gonna call it dashboard okay and then we say um, just do a P P stands for paragraph welcome admin so we're gonna close this and now what we want to do is create a meta tag basically what that does is I'm just gonna copy and paste it for now so go here and then what we have here is basically a meta tag which usually we would put in the header tag but anything inside the echo statement it could even be HTML code it straight away compiles it to the website so what, what the meta tag does is it redirects the user to another link and you can set a time limit like a timeout if you like so we can set a timeout of three seconds and we can say please please wait while you are being redirected to your account dot 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 okay so we have a timer of three seconds so it's going to sleep for three seconds and then it's going to take the user to we're not dashboard.php we're not going here so instead of that we're just going to type in um what was the name again session dot php that's all you really need so now if you refresh the page, it should say, login success, please wait while you're being redirected. And in three seconds, here we are, we're re redirected to the admin account. So in here you could have whatever you wanted, like a logo button and everything. Um, anyway guys, that was it for today's tutorial. Hope I was able to help you guys um, learn this simple PHP code that will help you create like a login session. Stay tuned for the next tutorial, so make sure to subscribe, comment, and um, turn on the notifications so that you have, so that you're able to see the next video where we'll be linking this code to an actual database so that it's more like a real life login session. Um, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.